psychedelia, the psychedelics after outlawing was not just adopted by hippies, hippies, but a lot of people saw this thing as good. And there was a there's a lot of it in the arts. There's in other music scenes, and the gay gay scene took psychedelia as part of it as well. So it returned. So it, the psychedelic sort of lifestyle branched uh, forward, and the hippies are just in Goa. It's just one part of it. So Goa was a Portuguese colony still when uh, the hippies started go going there. Um, they were traveling mostly in India to learn like the esoteric uh, arts of uh, Hinduism and, and get to know different kind of culture. But uh, still, they, it was a for a Westerner, India was, can be a bit stress stressful place. So Goa was still Portuguese and it's more European in the atmosphere. So Goa sort of became a, like a resting place where you'd sort of a home away from home and uh, the Anjuna beach which was basically just a deserted beach on the end of a dirt road as Gogil said um, it was a place where you could stay nude uh, all the time and be a com part of a communal lifestyle there wasn't there wa no way there wasn't electricity at first no way Amplifi first amplified speaker had to be <laughs> smuggled into Goa, because the old time hippies really wouldn't have that. But soon, uh, soon enough there was uh, there was uh, there was uh, somebody who came with the speakers and there was a band and the full moon parties would gradually begin. And usually these are at the start of the season, especially after monsoon, so that's around New Year's, Christmas, New Year time. Uh, start, on, start, in, start around then, and travelers would come on full moon to some of these destinations, but of course we're not now talking of Goa, so, and have a good time and rest before going on with their travels, and what business some food. Eventually people would start staying more, in, more and more in Goa, but uh, that was certainly not the case in the beginning. So, how does electronic music figure with the hippie nude paradise? Well, first of all, when time passed, um, uh, the culture of copying and trading obscure music there uh, was something that something that was already there. But C cassette changed a lot because C cassette is easy to copy and. And when the new wave of you travelers I was talking about in the 80s, when uh, traveling became cheaper, these are guys with a very different musical background than the original hippies in Goa. Uh, they found out that there's good parties in there, but uh, with them, they have different tastes. Uh, so they, they found out that people are trading in interesting music in their in their houses, like uh, copying Stockhausen or uh, old, uh, old uh, really freaked out set by Grateful Dead or our uh, old uh, synthesizer rock and uh, really interesting stuff um, but these guys these guys really uh, had a different taste it's, there was already avant how avant disco and how synth pop EDM was developing really fast but uh, of course electronic dance music was something that the old crowd doesn't didn't really like so at first it was just the new guys were just copying between themselves but eventually uh, they started putting the speaker on the verandas and uh, people started noticing that oh this is really people are dancing to this dancing to this uh, music and Irbok who are interviewed in 2012 uh, he had the opinion that uh, everybody noticed that uh, a lot more people were dancing when the band stopped playing and the tapes were put on in the middle and so in like 84, 85 this starts and so now the, the first people who played electronic dance music at parties were like Dr. Bobby, Fred Disco, French Fabian, Swiss Rudy but then there was one French guy who was DJ Laurent who was really skilled 
he would make he would work in Europe and he would cut and slice tapes and he had a plan he had a full night plan he he had a 10 hour plan he he told the story you know like in a really 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 long way so he would put the tape on he would change it to the next and it was all all planned until the morning so he combined like new wave uh, Belgian new beat which is acid house in Belgium if you don't know uh, Kreut Rock this is German uh, German, German uh, like uh, since influenced or or uh, experimental rock synth, synth pop uh, Italian Spanish house Spanish house uh, Ibiza house and EBM in even early industrial he had really skilled editing techniques he used to sample from TVs and movies like uh, alien abductions and uh, um, police sirens and that stuff so he he changed the game so when Lawrence tapes were playing everybody was dancing it was nobody wanted to hear the play band anymore because the people had started changing the the hippies looked down on it first the old hippies but eventually they had to they had to expect accept it that this was this was good music and Laurent set the standard and uh, other DJs just came on and came, came in the in the um, on the scene so so where was the music so this this started in somewhere around 86 uh, 84, 84 the first, but then even the first uh, electronic dance music parties were already in 86, 87. And, and then uh, we have also the fluorescent paints, which has come in mid 80s. And this is where the Finnish part starts. So Ior Bok was uh, one of the first sort of elder hippies in Goa to actually prefer electronic dance music over rock and roll. Usually they say that Goa Gil was the first, but what, uh, from what I gather from my interviews that this is not really true. Goa Gil used to be a bandman first, so he had the tapes on the side, but the band was always first. So... Let's listen to where the music was in the late... late 80s. So, some classic synth pop thing, just listen to the uh, synth riff. going to surprise you. This is from 89. This is a remix by William Orbit of an electronic body music song. 
So check it out. It's it's like modern. It's the same. So the vocal would be taken out in Goa or short and really short. Really short. Then go back to the rhythm. Analog synthesizers. Take recording. Quick time code. It's not that far for modern dance music. It's uh, what, 25 years ago? Who weren't even born then? An 89. Do you have any hands? No? You? Yeah? This is older than you. Surprised? Yeah. Alright, let's go on. Oops, not that one. So, from uh, stuff like this, I'm not going to have time to play any more, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in the new wave synth pop. You really should listen if you're into this stuff. Uh, the sort of building blocks for GoTrans are right there. Um, so, so what is the GoTrans dance? So this is uh, this is different. This is not just the music, but it's the whole experience. And uh, so, so I would say it's like a continuously playing hypnotic electronic dance music from dusk to dawn, with a plot line reconstant reconstructing the classic hero's journey. So you have an easy start uh, where this sort of the hero, hero goes on the mission and everything is like I'm going to conquer this. And it's so it's a light groove. It's easy to dance to and it sort of captures you. But then comes the night. The dark starts. So dark darkness comes in. So there's a descent into the underworld. There's a fierce battles with dark nightmares and strange creatures. So this is where I guess where dark. Psytrance comes from. So this is a part of the plan, part of the whole night, ten, ni ten hour journey that uh, DJ Loran used to play. 
which is sort of like the prototype for the Goa Trans Party. Uh, then at the sunrise, there's the morning music. So it's a triumphant return with a reconstruction, the coexistence of dark and light and lessons learned. So you have part of the dark, but it's within the framework of light and everybody's happy and smiling faces in jungle. And of course the party is free. Nobody knows the DJ. The DJ is not even there, visible. He's just stuck in some corner. No, and everybody's looking at each other. They're they're not dancing in a, you know, like backs at each other. They're just they're just having fun. And uh, the sound is four point usually, or well, not always. And they're just spread around everywhere. And there's uh, there's chai and uh, chai ladies uh, who are serving chai somewhere on the mats, uh, not far from the party. And you can leave your stuff there for a little little money and a few some rupees. And then there's fluorescent decoration, which is already there in, from the mid mid 80s. Or fire, which is an important part as well. Uh, I'm not going to get into the get into the festival of colors, but uh, some of the psychedelic paints uh, actually originated from India. They, they used the pigment in the uh, festival of colors there, and they paint the trees, the the uh, palm trees, and then they hang lanterns in the trees. So this was uh, something that the Goa hippies use as well. They uh, they they uh, worked with the locals, which is what the originals always did on Goa. They had the locals run part of the party and they, they were good friends with the locals and the locals could get some money, some western dollars from uh, selling chai and stuff. So it really benefited the com community but it didn't benefit the big hotels they were building in other parts of Goa. So <laughs> there was already a con conflict in there and some of you may know that the police is pretty corrupt in India. So there's some people wanted to stop this because it was eating into their profits and uh, making a bad name for the uh, commercial development of tourism in Goa. So, But let's not get into that. I don't have time to read my read the books. This one, this one, this one has a lot of older, even older stuff than what I cover. And this one has as well. And this one. So, but anyway. So, let's, so now we're going into the Part time of Acid House. Acid House sort of starts in '87, and uh, Acid House didn't really catch that strong in Go at first because it's quite, it's it's a bit too rough, I guess, for their style. But uh, when Acid Trans comes in, then then it sends stuff happens. So, so so well, first of all, this Lawrence tape had been listened to a lot, a lot. They were, and he was making new tapes every year. He would bring in new tapes. He would have newer music, and some. He was originally started with the new beat, and new beat is Belgian's acid house, basically. And uh, let's listen to some more. So trance. This is interesting. Really interesting. German trance. Um, we'll get into this white, white trance and white acid trance later when we talk about dots, but let's listen to some more. LDC, the Schwarze Zone. 92. already past the peak of tra rave and we're starting to get into trance. A lot has happened in like four years, a really a lot. Complete like revolution in partying in Europe. After the German summer of love in 90, 1990, completely different game. Oh, 
ist das interplanetare Kollision zweier Planeten. Die Wucht der Explosion erschütterte das gesamte Sonnensystem. Starke Energiefelder verursachten die Kernschmelze fast aller Reaktoren unserer Erde. Auf der nördlichen Hemisphäre entstand ein Gebiet, das Überlebende die schwarze Zone nannten. Okay, let's have another one from Germany. This is not gold trans. This is acid trans. Okay. So what was happening in Ibiza and Spain then? I wonder. I wonder why. What was happening? They call themselves the Bookhouse Boys. 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 It's from 91. Mega Beat. Twin Beat. Play this from key tape. On Ibiza they would play this on vinyl, but vinyl doesn't keep and go, so they had to take copies of it. I guess in 91, maybe one person might have had that, but not more. You can actually hear this track in some uh, Goa mixes. It's Spanish or Visa. Really cool stuff. The chorus, pretty much the same you hear in some early go trends. And if this doesn't Arbeca doesn't sound like go trends, then shoot me. <laughs> Alright, so we have a lot of building blocks in place, place there. 
I wish I had some old Japanese stuff, but I didn't find it. So, what happens here? It's the same thing, curiously. Playing style of the uh, DJs, what they played gets uh, canonized into a new musical genre. So, 1992, Juno Reactor, Mandragora, Infinite Project, they start, they start making this into records. Uh, I guess Juno Reactor and uh, Mandragora is uh, one of the few people who actually brought uh, their sequencing uh, stuff to Goa and made music there. Not a lot of people did that because, uh, well, Goa is really hostile again for electronics and it's, it's wet, uh, damp and uh, there's a lot of sand and wind and uh, there's salt in the air and it's really hot. So stuff decays fast. And so, 1993, we have the Dragonfly, Dragonfly Records Project 2 Trans, and then we have Juno Reactor's uh, Transmissions. So let's play uh, High Energy Protons from Juno Reactor. Here, sort of uh, the EBM industrial influence in the rhythm, but it's very much trans. if you bought it in the shop in 92. sound anyway. You might have heard Man to Ray, which is an interesting track as well. samples coming in. This is different. No, no, not so many samples expect in the Ibiza stuff. But Ibiza stuff is really sort of the same as in Goa. With, it's not just usually mentioned. It's, it goes in hand in hand, but same but different. strong kick drum now, deep and strong. And then we have this bass line. We didn't hear this one before. We still have this bass line, right?
Okay, it's it's going trials all right. Okay, I'm gonna book the next slide while we listen. So, by the time Juno Mercury is making this track, and uh, the Dragonfly Project to Trans is released, and uh, soon order or Uh By the time that time is already big, but even before that, the parties have started to become much larger. There's a uh, Goa style parties elsewhere in the world. Um, there's Pagan Productions parties in 1988 to 1991 uh, in Holland, Rijkhoff, pretty close to Amsterdam. And then there's the rave scene, which uh, sort of gets people into the parties in Europe. And then there's it, it's in they're playing a bit different style of music, and people get interested. In, okay, this this guy's this music is from Goa. Or mixed mixed by DJs, so they, they have these kind of parties all the time in Goa during the uh, during the season uh, after the New Year. So the rave scene was full blown. You know, people were going on really high, being really high on MDMA psychedelics. And well, it sound probably sounded pretty good that this kind of music is played in paradise. And a lot of people started going, found out. Somehow started going to Goa, and they know that they're going to be meet these kind of people there. So Goa starts changing. It's it start attracting, especially electronic dance music people, not just uh, alternative lifestyle people. Digital audio tape. Who, how many of you know what that is? One, two, three, four, five, five people. Okay, that is a uh, first uh, mass-produced, uh, high-quality digital, cheap enough technology to record digitally. So the first that is in going ninety-one. This from this book. I heard it was from 92, but this guy says it's 91, so I think he's right. He's probably got better sources than me. And they become popular really fast. By 1993, people already have portable dots, and 94, basically everyone has them. Uh, this changes a lot in the copying game. So high-quality digital copies can become possible. So what makes the sense for copying old C cassette to dots? I don't. It's on hissy, it's bad sound quality, it's all compressed. No, that sounds crap. So, there's this new trance that's coming from Europe, and uh, there's these few Go Trance records already. And why, why have that old stuff when you can have the new that's crystal clear? So, Acid Trance plays a pretty good large role as like a substitute for not being able to have sort of exactly that music that we wanted but as it turns is close enough so it's copied a lot on the tapes on the dot tapes and what changes also is that you can't mix anymore uh, you can't change the speed on the, on dot you could with C cassette because you people use pro walkman uh, which is a reporter model with variable speed so in the jungle they would mix like house DJs but only from C cassette they had three C cassette players some of them had loops and cut loops in the tape going around they just record it and they would just work like house Jesus they would, they would beat match and they would change and swap and take parts from each each one but you can't do that with that only two of these Suzuki has been documented in beat matching with that but he only played his own tracks 
basically. So, and they were running the same key, uh, key and same tempo. So he could do that, but there's not reports of anybody else doing that. So now we have the Goa mix, which is the non beat match mix <laughs> where you just well you just throw in the other beat and then boom 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 you know nobody cares <laughs> so what happens is uh now we have already cheap synthesizers it's beginning of 90s and uh, and a lot of artists have been making tracks already and going to goa so they start to create this new material which is suitable for that mixing so they want to sort of cre recreate the feeling. They want to have the perfect music for Goa party. So when they go back to Europe from Goa, they in there they generate the generate the sort of optimum track to play on Goa parties. And let me say that this is not just on Goa, but this is already happening in Koba, Kobana, uh, Bahia, Bali. So Ray BDM is is good, but it's geared towards beat mixing. And so this, then the old the the, the go trance that comes in is really scarce. So the new, the tracks the because it's possible to just copy them endlessly. So what same time happens is that uh, you can you just don't copy to everyone because you're a DJ. So you have to protect your material. So there's uh, in go there's this comes this really value system of who gets copied of this and that and that. I won't get into that much in detail, but I have uh, documentation of it in here. Some of you have may heard about the Dat Mafia. So if you know what the Dat Mafia is about, then you know what I'm talking about. But basically it's just, just that to get, to get a co copy of some track which nobody had, which is probably actually a track released on vinyl in in Europe anyway, but on Goa, you were in Goa, you didn't get it in Goa because you were in India. So you would really have to talk to that guy, you would have to have to vasa for him, you would have to you would have to fill his chillum and uh, sit down with him for a long time and discuss matters, who gets what, so you might have ended up with some unreleased tracks if you were really lucky, but you just ended up with some some tracks from uh, from Germany or or uh, English trans, everybody would say that yo this is unreleased. But then when you came back to <laughs> came back to West, you'd find out oh your guy has this on vinyl. <laughs> He's been playing it for <laughs> the whole winter already. So that happened a lot. Um, anyway, so yeah, what does this go trans then sound like? This is now the stuff that's develop for Goa in mind especially. So let's start with uh, the D track. And I'm not gonna say what it is, but everybody who knows, the first one who knows can say it. Track is LSD. What was that? So is it mostly 303 and 909? I don't know go at all, but I know 303 and that sounds like 303. Yeah, there's probably 303, but it doesn't have to be. 
the students are start coming in now. Let's get into some uh, more a bit full on style and from the very beginning. So, this is the Infinity Project, also known as TIP later. Um, Super Booster. as well, not just the, the parties in Goa and other places, because the music has become available. So we have uh, some of the first record labels, uh, Dragonfly, Blue Room release, Smart records from the Copenhagen Symbiosis, Flying Reno T and TMP, all from UK. Then we have Phonocall from Israel, the first one from there, and Matsuri from Japan, Transient, uh, I think that's all for UK. And then we have Psy Harmonics uh, from Australia, some of the first ones. The Australian sound. Yes, it's a bit different. Uh, we'll get into that a bit later, later, if we have time. So, Denmark produces uh, Cox Box. So, you might have heard Cox Box. Uh, let's see. Tribal Oscillations, original mix. Mm. 95, I think. So the vinyl really changes it. So first cost box release is Acid Vol 3. It's in already in 93 on uh, Hard House. But this one is not on Hard House anymore. And Copenhagen, by the way, where Cox Box is from, has had a really strong Goa trans scene. A lot of the Finnish DJs got their first Goa trans record from Copenhagen.
So now the, now already in 95, the local scenes are starting to get different, different sounds, very different. And now Australia went really far away. Let's play uh, Shaolin Wooden Man. really the side trends of today but the elements are certainly there. It's pretty close to techno. really gets successful in something like 1995, 1996 and the Goa Trans collection starts selling really well and everybody starts making them and the money in these sort of uh, starts maybe to cause a little bit of problems uh, first uh, the collections already always have the same tracks and uh, these tracks are old and uh, everybody knows them already but of course they sell well because not really a lot of people have known them and this is where actually the go trends comes from nobody call it go trends before they call it acid music or go mix uh, what but go trends was only added by the recording industry uh, to my knowledge is it's from the recording industry of the UK that added that name and then we get into the other problems because everybody always talks about go trends uh, and we are referring to the culture, um, but really that name is just a name is just a record label name. But everybody started using it, and everybody had a different meaning. For the old hippies in Goa, in the for them, uh, it's like the trans, the electronic dance music came to them. They were already in Goa, and from their perspective, trans is born in Goa. They don't know about everything, anything else. So all the stories the old hippies tell tell that uh, they invented electronic dance music. You might have heard some of these stories, but it's just a viewpoint. It's their viewpoint. It's different. 
So, the trans dance gonna start third bodies? Well, that's not really going anywhere. Anyway, it's, it's like a it's a, like a movement that was international and it, it, it was already in Copangan in 1988, this was in Bali in 1989, it was in Bahia in Brazil 91. So, well, <laughs> every sort of, the record label industry sort of wants to think that the Goa trance is a Goa thing. No, it's not. It really isn't. And then the, uh, there's the Goa mix, which uh, was called before the label started putting the name of Goa trance in 95 or something. And, uh, well, that's not really the same either. It's, it's like, it's the same music, but it's just been sort of uh, canonized. It's, uh, it's, there's this uh, mold that there has to be this this thing, the, that thing, and that thing. Because the record labels like their categories, they can put this stuff. Yeah, put it in the Gower Trans section. They don't sell well. And then, of course, we have the drugs. Psychedelic experiences, experiences sort of <laughs> have that effect on you that uh, you really sort of think that things have a really huge um, significance sometimes when they don't but of course uh, it is real for the experiencer at least so here are the common problems but why go trans is uh, actually a pretty difficult topic so i think i've got my time allocated time here um i didn't get into into finish trends at all so you can read it here I guess I wouldn't have to speak for like three hours because I like to play music so let's go through this quickly just uh, so the global lifestyle was already there so the party had entered the uh, small local communities everywhere around the world well in advance because uh, there were travelers from most western countries and then they came back home and they were sort of brought part of Goa with them. Copenhagen had a strong scene and well, UK just had, had it all. They, they really liked it. They, they, they were the guys who commercialized Goa Trans anyway. And they, they were making records, a lot of their records, their first records were most all, all of them were British. And there's a few from, few from Denmark and uh, some from Israel, but even Israel starts in like 95. Some say that it started in 1994, but I'm not completely sure on that, so I can't, I can't say. And then there's the interesting part that how Goa sort of fits with the uh, electronic dance music, so like this futuristic shamanism. So Goa sort of has it all. It's 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 like it has the Indian mysticism part from the and the hippie culture, the freedom and. Then it has the DJ, and then it has the futuristic sound, and then there's the trans concept, the journey, and the self transformation aspect of transing out into, you know, like a 10 year, 10 hour journey. So, Go Trans really fit that well. So, I guess it was a good, good thing to sell. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, um, I have some small slides, but there's stuff from your book. Uh, so, your book went there from 74, and he was one of the first people who would play go uh, the, the electronic dance music at his own parties, before Goa Gale, actually. And he's not the only one before Goa Gale. And uh, then, uh, uh, the, the new generation from Finland usually starts going around uh, 89, 91. Um, the first Finnish parties is in 87, which is even before Pagan Production Party. It is the oldest known documented. I have not seen a go any documents of a Goa party earlier than 87 any anywhere else. So Finland is sort of the first here. So yay, yay for Finland. Um, yeah, this is the last slide. Um, so I don't want to go on so much over time. I have three minutes, so questions. Yes, please. Uh, how big of a proportion is the Goa trans from the whole like EDM culture? 
uh, quite small if you count releases, but uh, you have to you have to count the influence of Go Trends not in the music, but in the party culture and in the philosophical input. Because as I said, that everything coexists uh, in the uh, rave scene time. It starts around eighty seven and ends in ninety two. That's like the golden age of rave acid house in, in Europe and in the Western Europe world, also in the US. There was a active scene in San Francisco uh, up to 92 as well. And uh, then, and also within that period, uh, the party scene uh, spreads from, from uh, Ibiza, Goa, uh, to also the Kupangan and the Bahia, Bali, and other places uh, I probably haven't even heard about. Uh, so they all exist, and the sort of the, I guess the peak point is the German view Vuv experience in uh, 92, which is like the first outdoor Goa style party. This with, it's, a, it's a German party, but its elements are very much the same as the uh, hippie party or the hippie festival. And that I think why Goa turns is important. And the Goa connection is important because it brings, and also the Ibiza, Ibiza Goa it is they go hand in hand, but they're not the same, but they're the same, in, in a way. But they're, they're like different aspects of the same same culture. Both are bohemic retreats, and both have uh, strong influence of uh, the original hippie culture. Because we, we are Westerners, we that, that thing just had a huge effect on us, uh, more than we know. Uh, so. This, this is where Co-Trans plays a part in the whole sort of uh, electronic dance music scene that it, it sort of connects this uh, outdoor festival kind of thing with uh, electronic dance music which is, which is usually just club music. Uh, so what we're doing here is sort of like re-enacting the Goa party in a Finnish forest. This is the same. This is in Goa it, the party was in the jungle. We are in the wild jungle, <laughs> rainforest at least for now. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Any other questions? This time I had, don't have any Goa heads here. Some people actually went to Goa. Hands up. No? Alright. People been to Kobanga. Okay. Well, so if there aren't any more questions, um, I thank you. Um, I hope this was informative. Um, um, I hope you had some surprises on the way. And uh, you learned uh, something about uh, how music develops and uh, connects people together. And uh, I could go to my last slide. There's a lot of these. That's the whole finished part. <laughs> and there will be another lecture on that later, I guess. I'm also writing a book, actually, but it's coming in quite... So, yeah, closing words. Uh, so, the music has a strong effect, so we are doing the trance dance, and uh, it's a physical thing. And uh, when people invest uh, all of the psychical energy, which you can do on the dance floor in a psychedelic trance party, uh, yourself sort of become a part of the system. This is from Mihail Shitsant Mihail, if you, who has written the books on flow, if you ever ever read them. So what becomes uh, there's a self transcendence here. You are going beyond the limits of yourself because you're investing all your psychic energy, sort of. The, this is not psychic energy, you know, like uh, like some esoteric energy, but this is like your brain is working like this. It's, it's psychology. So you're actually transcending the experience that you usually have of yourself. And that, that one can have a really strong experience. And you can sort of create life-lasting changes on that. And that has happened. It's, it's very well documented. And and I think it happened to me as well, uh, and a lot of other people I know. Uh, so, so how can we, how can we uh, perpetuate this? Well, sort of casting away the safety net of Western society, which is uh, looked at by Kruger, a Finnish researcher. Uh, that's usually pretty important. Being away from uh, home, um, not having familiar things, makes you makes it possible for you to 
uh, sort of rethink your own life in the new context and you're in this huge party with uh, smiling people and the bright lights loud sounds and just living in the moment so sort of your life can be uh, far away and this is reported this is a really common story and uh, I guess uh, what you guys are doing is the same thing it's a cultural thing perpetrated to true Gotrans and uh, then there's the flow experience the loss of consciousness of the self you're not really thinking about yourself so much you're just a part of the system and when you're part of the system altruism sort of the natural human impulse to work for others not just yourself sort of comes forward so it's, it's, it's you know it can be it's a tool that can be used for good gains and uh, people thinking community, rethinking community, rethinking their life, rethinking how to live together, at least for a while. And then you can apply that in your in your daily life. But of course, there's always someone who has an agenda. You have an agenda because, uh, yeah, well, uh, someone always has an agenda. So you have to live with that. That always happens. So come see the books if you want. Uh, this is the end of the lecture. So thank you for joining in and uh, I hope to see you guys again when I have the next lecture sometime. Thank you.